Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. To create a customer invoice, either click the Create Invoice link under the Action column for the Customer's Row within the Customer's page, or click the Create button and then click the Invoice link under the Customer's heading in the drop-down menu that appears. In the Invoice window that then opens, enter all of the information needed to invoice the customer. Use the Choose a Customer drop-down to select the customer to invoice or click the Add New Choice in this drop-down menu to add a new customer. The Email field shows the customer's email address if you entered it when saving their customer information. You can also type the customer's email address here if needed. To save the invoice but email the customer later, check the Send Later checkbox. The Billing Address field shows the selected customer's billing address if you entered it when creating the customer record. You can also type an address here if needed. To set the invoicing terms, use the Terms drop-down. If you set a default payment term for the selected customer when creating their record, that value appears here. You can also select the Add New Choice from the Terms drop-down to create new payment terms if needed. The Invoice Date field shows the current date. The Due Date field reflects the date from the Terms field's selection. If you have Locations enabled, you can select a location from the Location drop-down. If you have Shipping enabled, enter the shipping information into the Ship Via, Shipping Date, Tracking Number, and Shipping Address fields that appear. If you have Custom fields enabled, then enter any custom field data into the fields you chose to display in the sales forms. The next area is the Line Items area where you enter the products and or services for which you are invoicing. If you enable service dates and sales forms, you can enter the service date of services provided into the service date column. Click into the product service column and then select a product or service from the drop down menu. If you selected a product or service, the description appears in the description column. You can also type a description here if desired. You can enter the quantity of a product bought or service provided by typing it into the quantity field. The rate for the product or service per unit of quantity appears in the rate field. You can change it if needed. The quantity field is multiplied by the rate field to show the total amount for the line item in the amount field. If entering a product or service without a rate or amount, you can simply enter the total amount into the amount field if needed. If the product or service is taxable, ensure there is a check mark in the tax field for the line item. If classes are enabled and assigned by one to each row in transaction forms, then you can select a class from the class drop-down. If enabled but assigned one to each transaction, then the class field instead appears at the top of the invoice form in the customer area. After completing the first line item, continue adding line items until you've completed the invoice. At the left end of each line item row is a selection handle. To change the order of the line items, roll your mouse pointer over this handle until it turns into a four-pointed crossed arrow. Then click or drag the line item up or down to reorganize the line items if needed. To delete a line item, click the delete button at the right end of the line item row to delete. To add a new line item row, click into the bottom line item row to automatically add a new row. To add four new rows at once, click the Add Lines button under the line items area. To delete all the line items, click the Clear All Lines button in the same location. To add a subtotal to the invoice, select the row above where you want to insert the subtotal row. Then click the Add Subtotal button to add a subtotal line below the currently selected row. You can add as many subtotal lines as the invoice requires. To enter a message to display on the invoice, type it into the Message Displayed on Invoice field. To enter a message that appears for this invoice in the Customer's Statement, type it into the Statement Memo field. In the lower right corner of the invoice is the Sales Tax, Subtotal, and Total Field information. If you entered a sales tax rate for the customer when creating their customer record, this rate appears in the Select a Sales Tax Rate drop-down. 
If this information was not entered, you can use this drop-down to select the correct sales tax rate. If you enabled a discount field in your sales forms, you can use the discount drop-down to select either the discount percent or discount value choice. Then enter the percentage or amount into the field to the right. You can click the button that looks like an up and down arrow within a blue circle to the left of the sales tax rate and discount fields to switch the order of the two fields in the invoice each time you click it. Doing this changes whether the discount is applied after sales tax is calculated or before sales tax is calculated based on the order in which the fields appear in the invoice. If shipping is enabled, you can enter the amount of shipping into the shipping field. To record an amount paid by the customer as a deposit at the time of invoicing, enter the amount into the deposit field. In the lower left corner of the invoice is an attachments field, which lets you attach a file to the invoice. You can drag and drop files onto the field or click the field's name or icon to open a file upload dialog box that you can use to browse for and then select the file to attach. Note the 25 megabyte file attachment size limit. The toolbar at the bottom of the invoice lists the actions you can perform on the invoice. You will see different options here when creating a new invoice versus opening an existing invoice. When creating a new invoice, you will see the cancel and clear buttons at the left side of the toolbar. Clicking cancel cancels the invoice creation. Clicking clear clears all the fields but keeps the window open. In the middle of the toolbar are the Print or Preview, Make Recurring, and Customize buttons. Clicking the Print or Preview button opens a pop-up menu that lets you check a Print Later checkbox or click either the Print or Preview or Print Packing Slip commands. Checking the Print Later checkbox saves the invoice and later reminds you to print it in the Activities list on the Dashboard page. Clicking the Print or Preview command opens a window that shows the invoice as a PDF and lets you preview or print it. Clicking the Print Packing Slip command creates a packing slip from the invoice and shows it as a PDF so you can print it. Clicking the Make Recurring button opens the Recurring Invoice window. This window lets you create a recurring invoice. This will be discussed in a separate lesson. If you open the Recurring Invoice window, you can click the Cancel button in the toolbar to cancel the recurring invoice and return to the main invoice screen. Clicking the Customize command in the toolbar lets you select a new invoice template to use, edit the current invoice template, or create a new invoice template by selecting a command in the pop-up menu that appears. Creating form templates is discussed in a separate lesson. After creating the invoice, you can click the Save button in the toolbar to save it. You can also click the Save and Send drop-down button at the right end of the toolbar and then click either the Save and New, Save and Close, or Save and Send commands. Clicking the Save and New command saves the invoice and creates a new invoice. Clicking the Save and Close command saves the invoice and closes the invoice window. Clicking the Save and Send command saves the invoice and sends it by email to the customer's email address. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.